What makes a great building? It needs to be strong, visually appealing, and most importantly, it needs to serve the community, often evolving over time. This is the Klamath County Armory and Auditorium. The Armory story begins with the forming of what would become a local National Guard unit in 1927. Overcoming financial obstacles, plans for this new purpose-built building were developed. The county, city, and community came together and raised half the cost of the building. Hoping for a public project completion grant from the new Works Progress Administration, the community selected an architect and builder. Uh, you know, we're just very pleased to know that a local architect designed this building and a building that's very similar to it is the gymnasium at Klamath Union High School. They both have the same roof structure. Many times over the last several years, I've walked with people as they were visiting into the main hall of the armory. And if they were local folks, often they'll just get to where they get into the main hall with the, you know, the high ceiling and the balcony all around. And you'll see them stop and pause and you can tell they're just you know remembering things. So uh, old George Roster House uh, contractor here in town, he was about 80 one day when he walked in for a visit and uh, we walked in and, and he just stopped and he looked up at that roof and uh, talked about how his uncle um, from Bend was the contractor and uh, he was just very impressed with his uncle's work. So it's, it's lovely to have those kind of connections with the building. As well as having a local architect and builder, the construction project utilized many locally produced and processed materials. You had uh, some brick manufacturing companies here in Klamath Falls there. And it supplied bricks uh, for places not only here in Klamath Falls, but as far away as Portland. So the bricks came from there, and of course the timber as well. So the museum is now listed on uh, the National Register of Historic Places um, because of its significance to the area, specifically as a community center and as an armory. It's significant not just because of those reasons, but also because of its architecture and design. The building is Art Deco, and it's representative of that era in the late 20s and, and, and 30s, when a lot of the United States was transitioning towards this particular style, uh, involving floral patterns, um, kind of a uh, rigid looking lines and and images and faces and so when you look at the building you, you'll notice concrete images of doughboys on the front you have eagles you have sunburst patterns that are in metal over the windows when you walk into the lobby and you look up you'll see the art deco uh, patterns that were painted onto the ceiling when you walk through the building you'll notice that some original light fixtures are also that Art Deco style kind of sunburst, and of course, the barrel roof as well. With overwhelming support from the community, overcoming all obstacles, the armory was completed in 1935 and dedicated the Klamath County Armory and Auditorium. One thing that's always impressed me about this building is that it was built during the depths of the Great Depression. It was during a time in local history when banks were failing locally. Uh, the, the great Pelican Theater was built just uh, you know a few blocks away, and it was uh, it went into receivership, and so a lot of people were struggling in various ways through the depression, uh, and yet somehow the community rallied in order to build this fantastic armory building. It's really quite an accomplishment uh, for the time. Of course, this was the home of the Battery D of the 249th Coast Artillery. That seems a little odd sometimes to think about this being a coast artillery unit, but they would drill here you know, through the year, and then once a year they would go to Fort Stevens and uh, probably have live fire drills at the fort. During the war, um, you had different events for people making uh, care packages and things like that to send off to the troops here. And you have pictures of, of people assembling things like that uh, during the war. Um, you also had the um, Klamath Commandos, uh, a women's support unit for the military. While functioning as an active guard base, many community support events were held. However, this wasn't the only use of the Armory and Auditorium. Many public entertainment and social events were also taking place. They had sometimes exhibition matches. Uh, there's one guy here in town still alive that uh, boxed as a youngster 
here. He was paired r rather uh, unfortunately with a, a, an opponent who's much larger than him, and so he basically got creamed in the fight. <laughs> but he's uh, still the one living person that we have that remembers boxing here. And then, of course, Sammy Gordon was uh, another important name here. He was, um, I'm not sure how much he was involved in the organiz organization of the fights, but he was a promoter and uh, was remembered around town for, still is, uh, by some of the old timers around here for going around and challenging people to boxing matches whenever he would see them. Come on, I'll fight you, I'll fight you, come on, and all that kind of stuff. Um, Sheriff Red Britain was a boxer here and also officiated uh, in some boxing matches here. Conveniently, the train station is almost across the street from the armory, and so it was just a really easy thing for them to do, is arrive on the train, come over here to the uh, museum, or to the armory, and set up their show. In terms of the performers, people from all over the country performed here, and it was a big draw to people in this, in this area. Uh, you'll find newspaper clippings and, and uh, different posters and things of different shows that were being held here, in that, held here at that time. There are a couple of names that are important in the civilian use of the building um, for events, <clears throat> with one of them being Baldy Evans, the orchestra leader, uh, who organized a lot of other bands, uh, performing acts, you know, all the big country names and a lot of jazz names, popular jazz names, uh, were brought in, <clears throat> and uh, lots of dances concerts organized by uh, Baldy. After the war, the needs of the military changed. Coastal batteries were no longer needed, nor were artillerymen demand them. The Guard unit's purpose had shifted. So it was in the aftermath, in the, in the decade after World War II, where things really started to shift. The, the need for these coastal batteries uh, was, was declining. So they uh, started eliminating a lot of these uh, coastal artillery units or repurposing them in different roles. The armory, in the end, was no longer needed. As focus changed, the armory building was no longer a good fit. The unit moved to a new location into another purpose-built building appropriate for their new tasking. With the guard unit relocating, the building was left to continue filling its role as a community venue. When they made that transition to solely an auditorium. Of course, all the military equipment was removed. Um, the structurally and, and in terms of space, very little changed in that period because um, when the 249th left this building, okay. it was a fairly easy transition between the two. Um, it was just it, its designation as an armory was eventually that, that designation was revoked. The National Guard moved out, then this became the Klamath Auditorium, and the public use continued for a few years after that, and so it was given over to more boxing, uh, wrestling matches, lots of uh, community dinners, banquets, expositions, car shows, scout expositions, circuses, you know, was a big part of the history of the building here, including elephants. Uh, we've never found a picture of elephants inside the building. We've got a newspaper clipping of an elephant um, posing for the camera just on the lawn out in front of the building. But we do have a number of local people still with us who remember uh, attending circuses as children and seeing the elephants coming marching in from the back of the building. Yeah, it must have been quite a sight. And the fact that our floor is a wood floor supported by post and beam construction uh, tells us that it was a pretty solidly built building if it could withstand automobiles and elephants and such. Public use of the building waned in the post-war years. New venues in the area were becoming available for community events, and public entertainments shifted. Uh, but you know, during the 60s, there were other venues opening up. The fairgrounds, you know, um, became an important venue, and uh, of course, there are auditoriums elsewhere in town. There's a nice auditorium at Mills Elementary School. Sacred Heart uh, has an auditorium in their building. Uh, that's for like theater type seating um, and then you know schools uh, got more gymnasiums and so eventually this building was uh, sitting idle more and more through the 60s and it reached a point where people were beginning to wonder what would ever be done with the old armory. Our county museum was established in 1954 uh, and it was uh, co-located with the new county library down on 3rd Street 
And so uh, the museum was growing rapidly. People were donating lots of materials to the museum. And so at some point, somebody suggested the idea that maybe the old armory could become the county museum. And so in 1969 and 70, uh, our museum director at the time, uh, Bill Burke, worked with uh, uh, board members of the Historical Society uh, to get the museum moved from the library building. When they finally got the museum completed, uh, I think they had a soft opening before a ribbon cutting, only they didn't cut a ribbon, they actually cut a strand of barbed wire right out here in the front. Had a nice crowd to help dedicate the new museum building. When they made that decision, a lot of, uh, they decided to change the layout of the, the building uh, substantially. You had uh, some of the bleachers on the south side of the building were, were covered over with a new landing over the top, transitioning away from, from being geared towards um, having audiences in there, towards having space to store things. Uh, you also had paneling put up along the inside of the building where things could be hung, and a lot of that original paneling is still there. Some areas have remained relatively unchanged as well, such as the, the captain's office. The captain's office hasn't changed hardly at all. The change from community auditorium to museum is probably when you saw, well, without a doubt, when you saw the greatest amount of change. So there's some pros and cons uh, as far as using the old armory as a museum. Uh, the greatest pro, of course, is that the building itself is a beautiful building with its Art Deco. Uh, design, lots of floor space, an enormous floor space, and a high ceiling about 35 feet high. So, you know, there's plenty of uh, room in here. But the building itself is you know, our biggest artifact. And so uh, we treasure the fact that the building itself has such a great history and that we have plenty of space here. One of the downsides is that it was not designed to be a museum. And so it doesn't have some of the basic uh, accoutrements we'd like to have, like appropriate lighting and climate control. Um, we're fortunate to have geothermal heat here through an arrangement with the city. We have uh, free geothermal heat because their geothermal system is located in the back of our property. Uh, but it's difficult to regulate. And so throughout most of our building, um, we have a difficult time maintaining an even uh, temperature. And several years ago we were able to build a climate control zone in a back portion of the building where we do have temperature and humidity very, very well regulated. In the late 1970s, energy costs were rising rapidly as oil prices skyrocketed. Heating a structure like the Armory Building would cost a fortune. Through a partnership between the city, county, and museum, a geothermal pumping station would be located on the museum's property. This partnership would result in free heating for the museum and a considerable savings in operating costs for the museum. So in the 70s, they, they built that well right at the back, uh, back side of the armory here, of the museum building. They tried to match the brick of the original structure. You can still see some uh, differences. Obviously, the, the armory building itself is, uh, it appears much older. A great piece of work was done by my predecessor, Judith Hassan, uh, who was the museum manager here for about five years. After she retired and uh, I uh, was lucky enough to get the job as museum manager, then she took it on as a project to submit a uh, nomination of this building for listing on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, that's quite a, a piece of work to take on. Uh, she did a beautiful job with it and it was considered by uh, the State Historic Preservation Office and it was ultimately accepted. The museum system in Klamath County consists of three sites. The Armory Building, the Baldwin Hotel, both on Main Street in downtown Klamath Falls, and the Fort Klamath site, about 45 minutes northwest of Klamath Falls. All three sites are on the National Register of Historic Places. Through its 90-year history, the Armory has served its community well, and those who have been entrusted with its care over the years are grateful for having had the privilege. I think one thing I would hope people would appreciate is that there's just a handful of buildings around town that date to another time and that show the pride that the community had back in its heyday. 
You know, Climber Falls was a boom town back in the 19-teens and 20s, and even going into the Great Depression, this is one of the places where people would come to find work. And uh, so this building, um, dating from that time, with all the memories of the events that were held here, romances that started here, uh, childhoods uh, that were spent in activities here, uh, you know, the building is just really a treasure for the community, and we're just happy to be in it still.